Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Victoria Luperi. I'm the EFLA clarinetist in the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra. With me are my friends Ivan Petruciello, who plays EFLA clarinet in the 4-4 Symphony Orchestra, and our dear, dear composer Till Mine, who wrote a beautiful piece for us um, for two EFLA clarinets and string quartet. So we're here to talk a little bit about the creative process, um, the, our background, our relationship, how this commission came about, um, the sources of inspiration, our artistic choices, um, so we are very excited uh, to tell you a little bit more about our project. Now, the work is titled Canzoni di Fiori, and these are basically songs uh, based on flowers or movements of work based on different flowers from around the world. It was written in response to a call from proposals from the ICA's Clarnet Fest in Fort Worth in uh, which, uh, who, which who, uh, the theme there was flowers without borders. Now, would you like uh, to talk a little bit about our background, Ivan, and how we all uh, met each other? Sure. So we met uh, basically in Fort Worth because I joined the Fort Worth Symphony in 2014, uh, where Victoria was the principal clarinet, and uh, I, we got to know each one of us in, in our own, own way um, uh, till. I, I, I got to know Till at TCO and Victoria, how did you? I actually know? met Till about 20 years ago when I was studying at the University of Southern California. Till was my uh, theory uh, teacher uh, there. So we had previously asked uh, Till to write music for us. For um, So we previously premiered and performed uh, um, clarinet quartet. Uh, so we premiered that in Assisi in Italy, have played it you know, in multiple places. So we were already familiar with Till's music. We were super drawn to it um, because of its trademark uh, lyricism and complexity and imagination. Uh, it's music that is uh, for us really fun to play and also we believe fun to listen to. There's just so much layer and complexity in the writing and the articulation as a feel for, you know, what the clarinet can do. So not to, you know, embarrass you too much in front of our audience still, but we're really wild about your music and we could not be more thrilled that you've, uh, you know, accepted and uh, to, to write a, a piece for us. Um, there's so much to talk about and we only have about 15, 20 minutes. But uh, before we get started, uh, we just want to remind you all or tell you all about our premiere, which will happen coincidentally the same weekend as this uh, ICA New Music Festival that would be October 16th, 17th and 18th in three locations ac across the Metroplex. So we have a concert in Mount Vernon, a concert in Farmers Branch, and finally a concert in Fort Worth. Uh, which is of uh, special significance to us all because uh, we have all collaborated in Texas before, and this is where Till is from. We're really happy to showcase his music. Now, Till, I would love for you to talk a little bit about um, you know this work and some of um, your ideas behind uh, this uh, piece. Well, thank you, thank you both so much, and I just want to say that collaborating with you has been such a, a special. Uh, you know, fun time that we've had together. I, I'm just so glad that we had the chance to collaborate and that you asked me to write this piece. So um, what made this really fun, uh, there were a lot of things that made this collaboration fun, but it was that we already knew each other well. And so we were able to communicate very easily about the sorts of things that you wanted. And I was able to ask you questions about the, your instruments. Uh, and I wasn't as familiar with the E-flat clarinet. That's probably true for a lot of composers as I am for say the soprano. Uh, clarinet. And so I, I wanted to make sure that I was covering all my bases. And I asked you, you know, you wanted special extended techniques and those sorts of things. And we established that, for instance, doing multiphonics was not your favorite. So we didn't do that. But there are Thank lots of other fun things that we did. What were you going to say, Yvonne? Thank you for not doing it. I mean, for, <laughs> I mean I'm not so form of multifunds. That well, and that's the beauty of having a collaboration a composer with, with musicians because we can work on just the things that you that you like. So if you like, we can just get right into the piece. Absolutely. Show you a few yes. things about it. So I'll just say first, just the overall structure is we decided that because of Flowers Without Borders, it was kind of a perfect theme 
to create smaller short movements. So there are nine movements and most of them are what, are what I call flower movements. And they represent flowers from different countries or states where we've either each lived or where we've all lived. For instance, the last movement is the Texas movement where we've all lived before. And, um, and then there are, there's the prelude and interlude and finale that use uh, themes that I created out of your names. So there's the, the letters in Victoria Luperi and then the letters in the name Ivan Petruziello. And so you'll hear in the first movement, the prelude, those two themes played in a very slow, long notes as a kind of an exposition of your personal themes. And so let, let's listen to a little bit of the first movement, which is the prelude movement. I want to make sure that our listeners know that this is a MIDI recording, but the real thing, as you mentioned, is going to happen <laughs> soon, but this is, this is just MIDI, so we have to take it as we can. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. You know, one of the things that I really love about our collaboration is that we took a concept and we just made it very, very personal. And so our names are woven into the music. Um, then uh, the flowers each represent a significant, uh, a, a meaningful place to each one of us. So I would like uh, for Ivan to introduce the next movement, please. Uh, the next movement is Italy. Uh, I'm from Italy, uh, as you can say by my beautiful accent. <laughs> um, well, the the. The Italy movement is a pretty straightforward movement, meaning that you can clearly uh, clearly hear the national anthem, but with Till's own take. Uh, that is very nice. Yes, I, I decided to kind of um, tweak the, the harmonies you know, behind it, and it's not at all like the original. But you, like you said, you can hear the theme uh, of, you know, the of the Italian national anthem, but it kind of twists and turns in interesting ways. So if you like, I'll play a little clip of that one too. Please. So here's, the, here's the Italy movement in which the, the lily is the national flower. So yeah, you heard the theme and it kind of just twists around a little bit. And I, I don't think it's really that different in a way from what I do with the next movement, which is the Germany movement. Um, so that's actually uh, like an, a waltz, which was what you would expect from Germany maybe, but it's more like a beer hall kind of waltz. So we should each be holding like a stein in our hand and, and enjoy ourselves. And uh, I hope that the music reflects that. It, it also kind of uh, twists and turns a little bit and there's even a little bit of laughter in there. The, the clarinets sometimes give these little funny scales and trills that, that emulate laughter. You know, I love that you're bringing out, you know, so much humor and so much charm and um, these elements in, in, in the E flat clarinet uh, writing that it's not maybe typically associated with, with the instrument. So for this particular movement, you know, I just feel like the downbeats feel like upbeats and there's displaced emphasis of the beats. I feel like I'm twirling through this movement. It's so fun. If you could, we could listen to a little bit of this, it'd be great. Sure, let's play a little bit of the Germany movement here.
do that kind of waltzing, waltzing around. You have to really swing your mug. <laughs> <laughs> Well, since I live in Pennsylvania, perhaps, you know, I could uh, talk a little bit about the Pennsylvania movement, which is based on the flower Calmia. And uh, this movement is a little bit slower and a little bit more thoughtful in nature. Um, there's a bit more of a lyrical, you know, sustained, expressive writing over uh, the E flat. Um, and uh, I don't know, it's, it just makes me smile. It's, yeah. it's wonderful, the ending particularly. And I feel like, um, you know, maybe the clip that we have will play, uh, will showcase that, that ending. I Is think there anything you'd like to add? Oh, I'll just say that, uh, you know, we, uh, the flower, the, the flower, the Kalamia flower from Pennsylvania is so small, it's delicate, white and pink with beautiful little uh, delicate designs. And so I was trying to emulate that in the music. This is probably the shortest movement of all. Uh, but it, it's also the most sort of improvisatory movement. And I just felt like the, the, all these little bursts of flowers kind of was asking for impro more of an improvisatory feel. But you will also hear the dissonance in there. Hopefully it's more of a sweet dissonance. So I'll play a little portion of this movement now. <laughs> so that brings us to the interlude, which is one of those movements like the prelude where I weave your names into it, and it's not a flower movement. And uh, this one is a scherzo. So uh, it actually has uh, like scherzo portions to it, and then interwoven between you hear a, um, like a chorale, that's an original chorale that it's almost like a rondo or a rondo variation. And then the clarinets often have the more playful music that comes in between the chorale. And this is, this uh, what, that's not a flower movement. I was gonna say flower, but there's no flower here. It's your themes. So structurally, it's like the, the middle point of the piece. Shall I play the clip of that one? Yes, please. Okay, okay so here's the interlude or scherzo. Like this movement is going to keep uh, us on our toes and so is the next movement uh ivan would you uh, care to introduce the next movement california well california is the movement that is for the two if la clarinets without the without the the quartet the string quartet uh, we actually already premiered uh, this piece uh, this movement um doing it by on a Zoom call, I mean, we put together the two, the two, the two videos, and uh, it's a very interesting moment. Uh, it's a lot of fun to play. Yeah. So this one, thank you. This one is, as you mentioned, without the strings. So it's the one movement where you both get to play, but there are no strings there. And uh, I'm not sure why, but this movement to me, even though it's California and it's the California poppy as the flower. I just had like a Scottish jig in mind. And so <laughs> you hear this Scottish music key, or maybe it's a reel, uh, keeps coming in. That's really what the whole point of this movement is. Uh, and maybe it's my middle name is MacIver. So maybe that's why the, the Scott <laughs> was rising up in me, even though I'm also Californian. So I'll play you a portion of the, the MIDI version of this uh, duet here, the, the uh, California movement.
Right. <laughs> Play, playing music. against each other. Makes me smile. It's just oh. absolutely delightful. I feel like um, I should introduce the next movement. I am originally from Argentina, and this movement is based on the national flower, flower of Argentina, the Seibo. Now, uh, this music has some elements of tango, and it feels very authentic. And this is one of my favorite movements because um, till the way you're writing here for the two E flats, which are basically set on, on octaves, it really is a very striking and surprising effect. I feel like it, the two clarinets sound like a bandoneon. So it feels, you know, just um, fabulous, uh, just thrilling. If we could play a little bit of this music, it'd be great. Of course. I'll play it and then I'm going to say a little something about it too. So here's a portion of the Argentina movement. <laughs> So yeah, I, any of you who know and love the music of Astor Piazzolla would recognize the style instantly. And I just have to give him all the credit for this uh, type of movement because, you know, uh, for, for one thing, I couldn't write music of Argentina without thinking of tango. And I've also written other tangos before, but they're all inspired by the music of Piazzolla because it's just like I've soaked up that style from listening to it so much because I love it so much. And in fact, in the portions, uh, much of this movement where I have you in octaves, I write in there quasi bandoneon. So it actually, you know, it's obviously very purposeful that I wanted those octaves to evoke the bandoneon. And I can't wait to hear it in, you know, hear it in person and see if that effect really works. <laughs> we'll try our best. <laughs> 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 yes. Well, I think it's really interesting to have an opportunity to, you know, have a conversation with a composer and kind of discuss the sources of inspiration um, from which some of these elements are drawn. And I think um, equally as important um, in this next movement, the Colombia movement, uh, to talk a little bit about some of these elements, you know, like maybe the classic cumbia and other things that, you know, have helped you shape uh, this, this movement. Could you care to... Would you care to, to tell us a few details? Sure. And I'm going to just wave because my lights went out there. They just <laughs> went back on. It's a uh, light sensitive, movement sensitive. Uh, so <laughs> yes, for this movement, like with other styles, when I'm writing something that I, uh, you know, like I've never lived in Colombia. I've never even been to Colombia when I, I can't wait to go, but I haven't been there. And so I, I explored the music of Colombia uh, through, you know, watching videos and looking at scores. And uh, I especially was listening to cumbia. And then there were other popular types of music I listened to from Colombia as well, but that was the main one. And it was that just this really fun, danceable uh, type of music that I was listening to. And um, I also have two of the string players using, um, uh, they're using shakers. So it's the one movement where they do something other than just play the, the strings. And uh, then the, the cello has this kind of offbeat baseline that, that comes in as well but primarily it's the dance that i'm going for yeah. so should i play a little bit beautiful ivan oh. ivan if you could talk about uh you know why uh, colombia is particularly meaningful uh to us but particular to you oh, yeah. yeah well i i lived many years in colombia uh where i performed as a clarinet player in, in several orchestras and uh, my wife is colombian so uh I mean, I, actually, I came from uh, to United States from uh, from Colombia. I was living in Colombia before coming to the United States. So Colombia is after Italy is my second or third. I don't know anymore. Uh, place um, the the music is really beautiful. You deliver it very very beautifully. Uh, there is a lot of folk tunes in, inside. And uh, um, would you have to 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 put the the, the MIDI is very nice to hear. Thank you. I'll play a little clip of this one as well. This is the Columbia movement.
Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So that leads us to the last one. And the last movement is the one that brings us all together because we, we all have been to Texas and we were all in Texas at the same time, living in Texas at the same time. And the blue bonnet is the flower of Texas, the state flower. So it's Lupinus uh, and that's the name of the flower. And uh, this is also a unique movement compositionally because it is a flower movement, but it's also like the prelude and the interlude, it has your themes woven into it. So it's like, uh, I think you've described it as a hoedown. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's like a Texas hoedown. Uh, it starts off with this country fiddle kind of sound and the strings get to play the country fiddle style and then eventually the clarinets get to play that as well. Uh, but again, it has your names woven in too. So- You can definitely yeah. hear Texas in, in here. In I hope movie. it comes across. I'll, I'll oh, play yeah. a clip of yeah. that. Here's the last movement from the finale, Texas. With this music, we conclude our presentation of Canzoni di Fiori by Till Mine. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I hope that uh, this presentation uh, has given you a, a little bit of a window, you know, to what happens, you know, behind the creative process, behind the uh, commission, and how important it is to keep commissioning new works for um, our instruments. And in this case, filling, you know, a pretty large ga gap, um, you know, for there's not a lot of writing for E flat clarinets, and certainly. I mean, not any uh, any other music that is written for two E flat clarinets and string quartet, at least that I know of. So, yeah, we're so grateful, Till, for writing this beautiful work for us. And I hope all of you who can make it uh, to our premiere performances, please, you're invited. Come join us. Thank you so much for tuning in. And um, yeah, keep making beautiful music. Bravo, Till. <laughs> Thank you Bravo. so much. Had a wonderful time collaborating with you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.